let's say you have a coordinate system, just your regular coordinate system, and you have the unit circle, right? Uh, so with the unit circle, you can use the trigonometric functions to get a vector pointing from the origin to some location on this unit circle based off of an angle that we usually call uh, theta, right? And so we can use this, um, this relationship in order to figure out how to rotate vectors. And so let's say we have some arbitrary point that we want to rotate. So let's, let's make it... Um, Let's say this is the point that we want to rotate by some angle theta. Then what we can do is that we can construct a coordinate space using our sine and cosine functions. Because we know that the cosine gives us the x-coordinate, and we know that the sine gives us the y-coordinate of this point, right? And so what we can do is that using sine and cosine, we can get this direction vector. And then after we have this vector, which is, you know, the x coordinate would be the cosine of theta and the y coordinate would be the sine of theta. So that's this red vector right here. That's just how we get that vector. Now, if we want to get the other vector, if we want to construct a coordinate system, then we can use some, uh, we can just swizzle this one. Uh, so effectively what we can do is that if we swap these two, and negate one of them, then we rotate this vector by 90 degrees. And depending on which one we negate, we will either rotate um, counterclockwise or clockwise, right? And so from this, it's very easy to get the, um, the rotated vector. And again, this would just be, and because I drew on the background layer, this would be negative sine, because again, we're swapping and negating it. So negative sine of theta, and then uh, cosine of theta. Uh, so this right here um, is this vector here. And so now what we've basically done is that we've constructed a coordinate system because we have two perpendicular vectors, right? So these are perfectly perpendicular. And so now what we can do using this coordinate system is that we can transform things with it. Um, and so if we have another vector, this one doesn't even have to be normalized. This could be anywhere, right? then what we're effectively doing, if we want to rotate this point, is that we are transforming it from the local space of this coordinate system to world space. So what we want to do is that we want to multiply the x-coordinate of this one by this vector, and the y-coordinate of this one by this vector. And that effectively does that transformation for us. Um, so if we want to rotate this one, um, then doing that multiplication gives us that result. So let's call this one A, and let's call this one B. Then our final position, of, if this is V, then um, V prime, let's say, as in the results, would be uh, the X coordinate of V multiplied by A, and then plus the Y coordinate of V multiplied by B. And so this is a complete rotation. This uh, effectively rotates the vector by the angle theta. And again, theta is baked into A and B here. Um, and there's also a very pretty way of writing this. Again, with math, you can write things in many different ways, right? Um, and so a very beautiful way of writing this is using matrices, because again, transformations generally just use matrices, right? Uh, and so if we want to calculate this, we can do V prime equals, uh, and then we can make a two by two matrix. Um, and so what we end up with is the cosine of theta, the sine of theta, and then we have the negative sine of theta, and then we have the cosine of theta. Obviously, when you want to compute this, um, you can cache some of these because you're you only need to run the cosine and the sine once, right? And then you can just negate um, the sine results, right? And so now we have a transformation matrix. It has two vectors that are orthogonal and they are normalized. And so this is our rotation matrix. What we can do is we can pass our our coordinate in as a column vector. So the x coordinate of v and the y coordinate of v. Um, so this effectively takes this vector and transforms it using this rotation matrix. And then what you get is the rotated vector uh, V prime. So in this case, uh, V prime would be so rotated by that amount. So I'm guessing it would land somewhere here, right? Um, so that would be rotating that vector by 
that amounts. And that's that's basically it. That's that's rotations. That's a very quick rundown. Sorry, I just woke up because I saw your tweet and then I was like, I know this. I have talked about this before. So there you go. It's basically a space transformation. Um, and the all the cosine magic is just um, getting the um, getting the vector a and then rotating it 90 degrees. That's why there are these like funky uh, negative signs. Um, so effectively, um, what we're looking at here is that this is the vector a, this this column here, and this is the vector b, this column right here. Um, and so that's that's how how you rotate vectors, or at least that's how I like to uh, explain it. So so there you go. Hope hope it helps. <laughs>